45% of emissions comes from the way we make and use products and food and how we manage our land. Those emissions, uh, that's when the circular economy can play a really important part because the circular economy is also about how we make and use items. But what role does the circular economy play in tackling climate change? Yeah, um, brilliant question. Very on point, of course, for our work. Um, we did a study in 2019 that looked at where emissions were coming from. Um, and that identified that actually 45% of emissions comes from the way we make and use products and food and how we manage our land. Um, so those emissions, uh, that's when the circular economy can play a really important part because the circular economy is also about how we make and use items. Um, so uh, in, if one thinks about the three principles of the circular economy, it's quite a helpful way of seeing how the contribution works. So under eliminate and wa eliminate waste and pollution, for example, in, if a, in a circular economy for fashion, if you design waste and pollution out of the production and manufacturing um, side of it, you can halve annual emissions from that sector to around 1.1 billion metric tons by 2030. If you think about circulate, circulate products and materials, another example is, um, another study has found that if you give second life through remanufacturing to products, that can result in 90% of savings compared to a new product being produced. And that's all, that's a really interesting area around the um, embodied energy that has When you make a product, of course, energy goes into that. But if you find ways of keeping it in use, then you can then you can reduce the emissions as per that study found. And then the third principle is regenerate nature. Um, and you, regenerate nature can come from various different elements of the circular economy. But to think specifically about food, if you design food for nature, you can reduce emissions by up to 70% and biodiversity impacts Um, can be reduced by about 50% compared to the current way of doing things. So you can see there how each of the three principles um, contributes. And of course, in specific examples, you can also have all the different elements of the circular economies working together. Um, so it's a really important part of solving for the 45% of emissions from the way we make and use products. And thinking about the circular economy, how have you seen the concept or this bigger idea of the circular economy evolve uh, in the discussions and in the negotiations that take part at COPs? Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a new and growing area. Um, the, a lot of focus is on the energy side, um, which is very you know that's completely understandable. Um, But the, this material side, if you want to think about it like that, well, the contribution that that can make and changes in how we manage the material side, that's that's beginning to come through. It's a growing area. Um, there's obviously a lot more to be done um, because the circular economy is, as you and I know, it's, it's quite a big topic. Um, and so there's a lot more to be done to think about, not just looking at, for example, improving recycling, um, but as per the summit, some of the examples I mentioned earlier, Some of the other loops, like how can they integrate sector economy into policy measures that do support remanufacturing, that do support the transition to regenerative agriculture, that do support the design out of waste and um, pollution through the manufacturing process and, and the use process. And I think you've, you've mentioned um, some of the key elements that we need to see. Uh, more of, but in order for countries and regions, I mean, we literally have the whole world coming together for this specific um, conference. What what are like in in a nutshell, like kind of the the, the major uh, action points you think we need to see in the upcoming years uh, in order for these countries and regions to really leverage the full potential of the of the circular economy. Yeah, so thinking about it in terms of in policy terms, um, we recently did a piece of work around um, uh, common policy goals for a sector economy. And I think we're seeing, we're starting to see more of the policies around uh, resource management. What will be really exciting is to see more policies that support the upstream innovation side. Um, for example, uh, to think of a few policies that the EU is currently looking at a sustainable products initiative. Um, that's a new area of policy that could potentially um, uh, really change the incentives and, and the signals that are sent to the, to the market about 
thinking through actually the, the principles of the circular economy in terms of what is put on the market. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's on the policy side. I think we can see a lot more of that, um, a lot more of connecting the circular economy to a lot of different agendas. Um, another thing that I think we need to see is actually a lot of practical demonstrations becoming, um, seeing it in action. Um, it, it can look and take many different forms and it doesn't necessarily always carry a label, but everything from uh, uh, tool libraries that you might be aware of in your local city to um, when you go to a shop, you may see, start seeing more reuse functions um, uh, to uh, actually accessing products more as a service potentially with a provider um, where, where the maintenance of an item can be, um, can be longer than, for example, if you own it yourself. Um, so the practical side needs to continue and needs to grow. Um, and that's something that like, is a key function, a key role for business to play. Um, and then on the policy side, as I was saying, we need to, we need to see, uh, it's great that the concept is being talked about. It's great that um, it's, it's connected to certain areas, but actually to scale it, it needs to connect into other areas. We need to think about how we really make the economics work and what economic incentives on the market because we have had a linear economy for a very long time so all the all of the um the incentives within the, our current economy are very in line with a linear economy unsurprisingly because that's what we currently have um so there's a there's quite a bit to do to scale it <laughs> <laughs>